anointing going on here, and there's a, a presence of God here that during the worship time that is, was totally amazing. It didn't start off right away. It started about after the first song or so, all of a sudden something fell down, and, and there was a, a freshness going on here. And going, you know, I, I think it's time to be awake because I think we've been sleeping, Christians. We've been sleeping. A few say, oh, we go to church every day. I'm not talking about going to church every day, but I think we're sleeping. I think we've been sleeping. We need to wake up. My title is Wake Up. <laughs> wake up! Amen. 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 And it's time to wake up. You know, in uh, Matthew 26, 30 to 41, Jesus was going to the garden of Gethsemane. And he had all his disciples with him. And he went there to the garden and he had a hard time with what he was going through. He had pressure going on. So if you think you're going through a hard time, Jesus went through a hard time. So, so you're good. He never went through what Jesus went through, but he went through a hard time. He was having work. He had pressure going on, you know? And, and there was some pressure. So he's, he called Peter and two more people to come and join him. And the other guys did. And, and he was joining them. And you can read it yourself, but I mean, when and he goes and asks these guys because he's had a hard time. How many times have you ever just wished you had somebody beside you through your hard times? You know you had a battle to fight, but you had nobody there. How many ever feel that? Just feel like, why? Why would... And the, maybe the first reason is why is because you never asked. So it's your fault. Don't complain. Because Jesus asked. Jesus asked, could you come and join me? And for one hour, only one hour, can you pray with me for one hour? Ooh, you know, five minutes, it feels like an hour when we pray. I mean, we go like this for five minutes, and all of a sudden... Your your daydream about your motorcycle or this or that and, and, and one hour is a long time. And he says, "Can you pray for my hour?" And when Jesus was asking God, "Can you remove this cup from me?" He was saying, "Is this really my purpose? Is this really my destiny?" Because there's a human nature that was represented in him like us, and so he re represented that. But he went out and he asked him to come for one hour. And Jesus said, "Just here, can you stand here and guard for me?" Can you stand here and just pray for me? And, and I have a great team for that, but sometimes we need people to just stand there. Don't need to know my business. You don't need to know what I'm not praying about. Just believe in me. Just believe in me. Amen? So while you're believing in me there, I'm going to go here and pray and stand there and, and be my strength for me. But what happened when Jesus came back? <laughs> they were sleeping on the watch. They were sleeping. And I think we are in an hour in the season, and that hour means season. We are in a season, and Christian and Jesus is saying, where are you? Why are you sleeping? And God is saying that I've been fighting for you, I've been battling for you, I've given you victory, I've given you things to hope for, I've given you the presence of God, I've given you the healing power, I've given you the miracle power. Where are you? Are you standing with me? Are you representing me? What are you doing? <laughs> this is a harsh word, so be it. But the fact is, it's true. We, we, we come in these paramat charismatic, not paramatics, but charismatic churches. <laughs> Sometimes they're paramatic, but I don't know. We come in these charismatic churches and we go, hallelujah, and we're singing away, and we become a hand of the fan. But, and, and we're singing, and, and we're, we're feeling good because we have some motion going on, but when we step out of the church, we go back to sleep. Some of us are so sleepy, we don't even want to come to church anymore. Some of us are so sleepy that because we, if there's a healing service going on, we don't want to go there because we've been too many times been disappointed. Yeah. We have forgotten what God is about. That's right. That's right. We that claim His healing, we that claim His miracles, Amen. have a fear of going to a miracle service. <laughs> we are here, but look who's here. There could be way more. But then when you have a coffee, a show show, you have a place so full you can barely walk around. See, the thing is, we're sleeping, and, and, and the Lord says, it's time to wake up, and it's time to do it. He says, he says in verse 41 of Matthew 26, he says, well, let's start verse 40, and he comes to the disciples, and he finds them asleep, and he says to Peter, what, what? Could you not stay awake for one hour? And Jesus is saying, can you not stay awake for the most critical season in mankind right now? The most critical season in Christianity right now? Do you have to be so nice that you become tolerable and you become conformed to the world? It hurts 
my heart. This church, of course, has no problems, but I, this hurts my heart. So you can share it. If this doesn't suit you, then share it. If you are the most reliable Christian and you're the most excitable Christian, you go for it. Take this word and start sharing it. But if you're that person that's asleep, wake up. Wake up. And he says, why can't you stay awake? And I believe Jesus is saying it's a season to be renewed. Not just a you by yourself, but it's renewed time for the church. It is time for the body of Christ to be renewed. It doesn't help you nothing individually renewing if you're not going to renew with somebody. Because your renewing won't do nothing if you have nothing to do with nobody. It doesn't do you absolutely no good being new for nothing. If you're not going to drive yourself, if you're not going to walk in, your, in the anointing, there, there is no use to be renewed. You have to do it together. Amen. See, the thing is that too many of us are waiting for the move of God when we are the move of God. That's right. <laughs> like, but we're not moving. We're not moving. Well, some of us are. I, I, I'm, I'm speaking in general. I have seen the most amazing services around. I've seen God moving in many places. But I don't see the move that we need to see. We are coming against the idea of the body of Christ. We're coming against the idea of a church connected for the sake of the kingdom. And we're, we're, we're competing against somebody else or that person. And we're competing about why not feed into what God has in your community. Feed into the anointing. Well, I'm not getting filled there. You know what? Church is not for you to get filled. It's for you to get taught. It's not there for your own pride and for your own use. It's there for you to be connected to somebody else so you become more powerful in the body of Christ. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but my needs are not met. Then, wake up! <coughs> your needs are met when you choose to be part of the body of Christ. Wake up! The Lord, this is a word. Uh, it's going to go on video and hopefully we can edit it just perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> I say words that we can edit okay, but who knows? But this is a word I believe for our church, but for the nation. My heart has been this: is that we've been so asleep. And I watched a testimony that really spoke to me, and it just woke me up. A, a person, and I posted my Facebook here. I want to watch it uh, on my leg page, my personal leg page. Uh, I watched this video, and it took 21 years for her to stand up on a wheelchair. But in those 21 years, she was frowned every time somebody says, do you want to be prayed for? Because she was so disappointed already because she was not getting it. See, the thing is, we need to get something here. You don't want to hear me talk about prayers and healings. You need to wake up. You need to wake up. It doesn't help me in praying in anointed word of God. It doesn't help us prophesy nothing if you're not going to wake up. We gotta wake up in our hearts today and say it's time to see God like we never have and time to see his miracles like we never have. It's time to wake up. Amen. It really is. People say, well, we had such a great service last week. That's great. Wake up. <laughs> That's a snooze button. What's do what you're doing out there is I'm awake. This is like, oh yeah, I gotta wake up for church. Yeah. I gotta praise God and I gotta feel good about myself. Woo! And you need that. If you didn't do that, you couldn't do nothing about there. Just you gotta feel good about yourself. But what are you doing feeling good about yourself? Anyway, that's my first part of my is wake up. The second part is this. How many of you are born again believers here? I wanna honestly see your hands. Don't be shy. Who is born again believers? I just wanna know if I'm talking to Christians or not. Everybody born again believers. Okay, great. And if you're not, you should run up here right now because I can help you out with that. Amen? But how many know, how many had a good experience when you were born again? How many had a good experience when you were born again? You just kind of thought, God just rescued you. Yeah. How many kind of stayed at that rescue point? And we're still in the survival point sometimes. Don't raise your hand. But. How many have been in that place where you're just surviving since you've been born again? Oh yeah, you see the glory of God, you hear God talk, but you're still surviving moment. How many of us have been in that place? But I believe this, as a Christian, there has to be an add-on. I have a whole message on add-on. It's called an add-on online. 
and I have a bunch of small clips that I put out about that one too. But it's an add-on. We need an add-on as a Christian. We can't just be a Christian because you're not going to survive in this world. Just be born again. You're not going to survive. Everybody says, I met one person one time and he says, uh, and they're kind of in a religious status uh, and they were being loving Jesus and they got, they, they just experienced their salvation for you, so I understand, that's fine, that's great. They said, why are you, it's, a, it's an elder, a leader of a place, and I had a great question, why are you so focused on miracles and inner healing? Why don't you just focus on salvation? So do you know what salvation means? I can say that. Do you really know what that means? It means totally healed, spirit, soul, and body. It means fulfilled with Christ Jesus, nothing lacking. Amen? Amen. Of course I'm focused on salvation. Anyway, and then he goes on and says, why miracles? Why not just get people born again? I said, how do you show love to your kids? So what do you do when they get a cut? How do you deal with it? You just say, oh, I love you, boy. <laughs> just bleed to death. I didn't say that. I'm just graduating main talk to right now. I'm, you know, I think those things all. Sometimes I feel like saying them. <coughs> and, and, and so, yeah, but what do you know? You have to understand that if you don't have the presence of God in operation, if you don't have the glory of God falling down on you, you're not experiencing the fullness of God no more. you got to experience His love. you got to experience His freedom. you got to experience something from Him because that's what love does. Amen? And so we've got to get waked up in that place and we've got to have an add-on. <laughs> being renewed as a born-again Christian is your add-on. Possibly renewed day by day. Yeah, we need to be renewed. What does renewed mean? Oh Lord, renew me your day. I feel lousy. That's what we kind of how we live. You know, we kind of confess, confess, you know, confess, but don't feel nothing sometimes. And um, but anyway, renewed means this. It's find that new experience again like we did the first time. In a greater way, because we experienced that the first time, so we won't experience the same way because it has to be new. So it means every time you get renewed, you experience something new in Jesus. Every time you get renewed, you get renewed. Isn't that great? Isn't that awesome? In Psalms 103, 1 to 5, I probably won't read all of it, I'll just relate to it. Actually, I will read it. Anyway, bless the Lord, oh my soul. You ever talk to your soul? You ever just talk to yourself? Yes. Bless the Lord. Oh, my mind. My mind's out of order. Come on. Bless it. Bless it in Jesus' name. It's kind of going wacko. <laughs> it's kind of thinking stress. It's kind of thinking depression. It's kind of thinking sadness. Come on. Wake up, right? Talk to your soul. What soul is your mind, will, emotions? Talk to it. Well, I know I should do God's will, but I feel like do this. Talk to yourself. Oh, my soul. To talk to the will and say, I want to do God's will. Come on, talk to it. Yeah. Amen? Amen. See, the thing, we're too busy doing our own thing because we think God is in our own thing. Which He is. But He can do a lot more than His thing. Amen. Amen? Amen? He will never deny you. He will never stop loving you. He will never quit being there for you. But the fact is, you can do a whole lot more if you want me in His will. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so He goes and says, Bless the Lord, all my soul. He says, Forget not my, all my benefits. Don't be ignorant, or don't ignore my benefits. Don't ignore it! Church, we got to wake up because we're ignoring the healing. And we do come to healing services, but we're still ignoring the fact that He's going to do a miracle that day. We have a hard time accepting it in our heart and releasing that new thing again to say, yes, Jesus, you can do what you did last year for me. Yes, Jesus, you can do what you did in the beginning for me. Yes, Jesus, I, I have it. Some testimonies will come out, but I have experienced so much healing because he did those same things over and over again. Wherever, and he, he's going to do it again, but we've got to get something going on here. You know what it takes to get healing? It took me to cry out to God and put everything to the side and just drop everything I had and say, God, here I am. Amen? Amen. There are some of us that are so busy trying to make something happen that's not working. I'm calling it out something new today. Amen? Yeah. It's still time. It's still time. Uh, Pastor Harry did not give me a time in, but I did give myself one. Because we want to minister to you guys. Verse 2. He says, Bless the Lord with all my soul. Where am I? Right there. 
and everything that's within me, bless this holy, bless the Lord, forget not or don't ignore his benefits. Verse 3, who forgives or he pardons all our iniquities. Everybody say all. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, poor me. No, there's no such thing as poor you. You're rich you. There's no poor you. You're done being poor. So stop thinking you're poor. That's the wrong thinking because that thinking it doesn't even exist because you're actually rich. The only way it exists is in a lie, but not in the truth. There is no poor you. Well, back I did that. Who cares? There's no poor you. Stop. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. Forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive them. Well, I'm not gonna ever step into that place. He he did this. Who cares? Step in the place. Forgive them. Because, according to the scripture, he did it all for us. It means that we have to deal with all of it and accept his promises. Amen? amen. Come on, talk louder than that. Amen? amen? Okay. See, the more amens you have, the better words you're going to have. I guarantee you. Yeah? He says, who forgives and pardons all our iniquities, who heals, which means cures and re repairs all the diseases. This is Old Testament. My goodness, I didn't know Jesus was healing in the Old Testament, but he was. Oh, man. And, anyway, here we go. Who redeems your life from destruction? <laughs> you think you've been destroyed? No! No! You are redeemed. Yes. Well, I lost everything. Great. Now I can start all over and get everything back that God and plus double more. So I'm like, who cares? God cares, so you don't have to. He worries for you. He, he takes care of you. You don't have to take care of those things. Uh, and I'm, I'm not stupid enough to know that we don't, but I'm just saying that we can fight past that. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I worry sometimes too, I have to admit. He says, He redeems us from destruction, which is corruption, who crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. You ever want to know if it's of God? <laughs> Find out if there's loving kindness and love. You ever want to know if it's God? Find out if there's some tender mercies going on in the people around you. If there's hatred, if there's bickering and bitterness, it's a selfish thing they're doing. Oh, you don't want to hear that. That's true. That hurts, I know. Because we all have reasons why to ignore. But we're waking up today, amen? Amen. amen. We're waking up today. Amen. I spoke the same thing at the church and it just sounds a whole lot different right now. So if you want to get the full message, go online. Are you, are we really crowned with love and kindness? Just think about it. Just take a moment to think that if we truly are in Christ Jesus, we are crowned with love and kindness. See, the thing is, it doesn't matter who you are. It matters what I do. We don't have much power. They don't. We just have a lot of voices. We don't have much power. Legally speaking, we don't have much power. You, on the other hand, on the streets, you can say whatever you want. You don't get in trouble. I do. Why are you not talking more? <laughs> Why are you not saying the things that I can't say? Why are you not taking what I'm teaching? I'm just talking. Is you okay? Why are you not taking what the preachers are teaching? Why are you not speaking what they're speaking? Because you have the right to speak. That's what it's called. You're called to get out there and do it. Speak the love of God. Speak the word of God. Amen? Amen. Don't do what you can't do, but do what you can. Don't, you, don't be so foolish thinking that you can do something that you can't do. Because you, you're going to be like those people who are going to be stripped naked right in front of the enemy. Do what you can't do. Amen? See, the thing is, I, when I heard that, I said, my God, and I think the law should change in that, but and maybe someday it will, but the fact is I can't say much. When it comes to politics, when it comes to that, I can't pick sides as a leader up here. But you can. You can't speak. You can fight. You have a free will. I'm under a law. You're not necessary in, this, in that case. Do you understand the power you church have? Do you understand the power of waking up? 
Do you understand what Jesus can do if we just do? My heart is going out. And I'm hoping that you don't take it the wrong way and do stupid things. I'm going to trust God's going to lead you. Sometimes when a preacher says something, they just go through it and it embarrasses me. Don't do that to me. Go be responsible. Go with love and kindness. Amen? Amen. Don't knock on somebody's door that doesn't want to be knocked on. Don't, don't crown somebody in the corner, crown somebody in the corner that just doesn't want nothing to do with you. And gets born again just to get blood in his face. Don't do that. Amen. 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 Man, we're going slow here, but we're going good. Are we still good? Amen. Great. Some of you, some of us, some people in the baby, we've been sitting for way too long. Some of us have been staying home. I don't know who I'm talking to because I don't know you guys. Some of you guys have been sitting at home. You only come out to special things. Oh, I shouldn't say that, sorry. Better, anyway, it's just true. You know what? There's more power in a boring church than there is in a guest speaker. Because there's power in connection. Amen. You know why church gets boring? Because the pastor's speaking to the same people every week. It's really not boring. It's just like eating cereal every day and you just get tired of it. It's still good for you. Right? Yeah. How many guys go out there? You know, sometimes we have to put some toxic stuff in there just to get you guys eating with. Like, like, you go to McDonald's, you eat there all the time, you know you can eat there how many times? It's addiction, right? So we have to try to put some addiction into that stuff. You know, we got to work hard to get your attention. It's not easy. But what is easy if you get renewed every day? And you come to church and expect something new every day because it's Jesus Christ showing up through the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Then you truly will get it. <laughs> oh boy, hallelujah. Well, we'll just go as far as I can go, but anyway, this is good stuff for me. I'm enjoying my own message, hallelujah. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> if you don't say it, I will. I have no clue. Verse five. Who satisfies my mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. Amen. When your heart, did you know when your heart breaks, sometimes that's the only time something good can come out of it? How many know through hardships you actually grow harder and go deeper in God than you ever have? Yeah, that's right. If you're so stubborn and you're not willing to break in your sickness, and you're not willing to break in your lies or your addictions or whatever you're suffering with, if you're not willing to break, you'll never ever grow. We need to be renewed. The soil has to become fresh in our heart, and the only way to do is to confess and break before God. Amen? Amen. So we've got to be renewed as youth, as eagles. What do you want to be renewed? What does renewed mean? It becomes to become new or to be repaired. See, the thing is, when you redo an old car or something, it's still the same car, except it's been renewed. It's the same year. Same model. Something was renewed, you get a little bit more high performance, which is great. With God, you can do the same thing. Amen? So, don't let failure stop in life, but I let it be a next door or next level to your life. When you fail in something, that means you need to stop and move here. It doesn't mean nothing else except that wasn't for you. Amen? Amen. If you can look at failure differently than we have, oh, I failed it. It's great. Praise God. I got a new way. Amen? Amen. That didn't work, so let's try it this way. <laughs> Serious. See, the thing is, every rejection in your life can be a new opportunity. Or you can stay rejected. Your choice. So allow yourself to be renewed today. I wake up in the presence of God in a brand new way today. In Isaiah 40, 28 to 31, it says this, and I won't read it all, but it says, you know, we're not supposed to faint. We're not supposed to faint not because the Lord does not faint not. It says, He gives power. Up. Oh man, let me just go. Can I just read the first verse? Sure, I can. 
Verse 28. It says, Have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faints not? Have you not heard that he faints not? Have you not heard that he faints not? Sometimes we think God is sleeping. Well, God, you're not hearing me, so my goodness, wake up! He faints not, neither is he weary. And weary means he doesn't work hard. He doesn't have to. He speaks it into existence. There is no searching of this un his understanding. Just listen to this. What does faint not mean? It means he does not grow weary. He doesn't get fatigued. He's always there, ready for you. Amen. Never a dry moment in his life. <laughs> He's always ready for you. He faints not. He says to the point, well, you don't even have to search me for this. Just go and it. Don't search it. Don't say, oh, God, where are you? No! I faint not. I'm here. There's no, he just doesn't faint. Like he just doesn't get weary. He doesn't. And the thing is that that's the kind of God that we carry. That's the kind of power we carry. The power that's always ready at all moments, at all times. He gives power to the faint. The weary, the fatigue. Are you fatigued today? Are you weary today? Are you weak today? He gives power to you. Amen. He gives power to you. Did you hear this? Like seriously, did you hear this? You depressed. You oppressed. You sick. He's giving you power. Amen. But we're sleeping. wake up. We'll never experience a power until we choose to forget the worldly system, but honor of course where you have to, and start bringing Jesus back into it completely. Not compromising his word, living it with full power and full destiny, with the love and kindness, being successful. Amen? Amen. Amen. It gives power, and power gives you might, and it gives you, where people don't have might, it gives you strength to increase power for it. Even the youths shall faint. Even the young people, I said I was going to read, but I am, so, so here we go. Almost done, am I? Um, even the youth shall not faint, but be, be weary. Have you not noticed our youth? Have you not noticed that church is not something for them no more something, in some cases? Have you noticed how they actually grow weary? <coughs> how they become so confused? Don't know the truth. Don't know if there's one way or five ways to heaven. I mean, no, there's no five, no four, no three, no two ways. There's only one. An experience with somebody, an organization just that are did it. They came to the door, and I assumed they were a Christian organization. And my other person just assumed they were Christian. Sorry. Says, I, you do this full time? Yeah. And a full time Christian? Um, yeah, I'm full time everything. I wear all the different shoes. <sighs> and he kind of tries to explain that we didn't let him go very far. He's trying to explain, like, you might not prefer my shoes, and I might not prefer your shoes, but it doesn't make it wrong. We're not talking about shoes, guys. We're talking about a God that doesn't faint, a God that can meet your personal needs. We're talking about God that personally mastered. Peace to you. I don't know if I said that right. He made you a masterpiece and he personally paid attention to you individually. We're not talking about what we like or we don't like. He's talking about God that loves you. That's what we're talking about. Amen? Amen. But it says, and I am crying out to the youth right now. They utterly stumble, they utterly fall down. I had a vision in 2014, late 2014, I think it was, where I saw a tsunami coming, not a good one, but I saw a lot of Christians scattered. They're reaching out and don't know where to go. 
because they don't have a body of Christ. They don't have an ark. They don't have a safe place. They don't have nowhere to be because they thought the body of Christ was being individual in the world. They thought it was an organism, which it is, but it was actually a place where there's a settlement of families. They don't understand that. They, they've been running around, and I saw this vision of people reaching, and they were drowning. Christians are drowning in their faith because they have nowhere to hold on to. Church, it's time to wake up. It's time to reach our hands out. It's time to create a safety. It's time to bring the truth back. It's time to be renewed today. Not just individually, but as a church. It's time to be in a renewing state. It's time to say, we, a safe harbor, whichever church you're part of, we are going to renew today. We're going to renew every time we come here. And we're going to come as a new person every time we come here. We're going to become new and we're going to see the church of God grow. Because we're not going to do just for the sake of doing. But we're coming here to see a God that doesn't think. Amen? Amen. 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 But they shall wait upon the Lord. And the word wait, if you translate it, actually also can mean they would look upon the Lord. How many of you know wait doesn't mean wait? Wait upon the Lord. It doesn't say wait for the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. It means be a waiter or a waitress for the Lord. Be a servant in God. That's what it means. It doesn't mean some God of waiting for this move of God. No, it doesn't say it says move. Be in the move. And I will renew your strength. Amen? Yeah. I'm a waiter for God, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I make a mistake, call myself a waitress, but that's not what I am. <laughs> See, the thing is, you only are waiting when you're doing. When you're sitting, we're being ignorant. Amen? Oh, too hard to say amen to. Amen. 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 That's right. But we shall renew. They shall look, <laughs> they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall, this word renew means a little different than I read before. It means to, to pass on the way. It's to pass through, to pass by. It's to renew. I'm going to pass through this place. I'm waiting. I'm walking. I'm passing through this to find the renewed. I'm walking to see the renewed. I'm, I'm past, I am going. I'm doing. Amen? Amen. Yeah, it says he renewed. It means to pass through the old, let the old behind, and start seeing the new God next week, the new God tomorrow. Not the new God, the same God, but the new God for you, the new thing that he has for you. Amen? We need to be renewed. It's not about just simply saying a prayer, but it's actually doing it and saying, God, I, I, I want to renew myself today. I want to become born again. I know I'm born again, but God, I want to experience of your love. I want to experience where, where I thought there, and which was right at that time, but I, I, there was nothing that could stop me. I was just walking. I would plow everything down. I would love one another. I would say, do you know Jesus to you? And I just was plowing the word of God. I, I wasn't hating people. I wasn't being, being silly with people, but I was just loving on people. Give me you need this. I don't know why, but you need this. Give me you need to be renewed. Churches are given you need to be renewed. You need to be renewed. You need to be renewed. Just like I need our churches to be renewed. We need to be renewed for the sake of the kingdom. We need to be renewed. Amen. We need to wake up from the old and say, I'm passing through this. And we're going to go with what God has. I don't understand it all. And I'm fearful. And I don't know. But... And the most it's in the fear of the Lord, don't worry. You're going to be safe in the fear of the Lord. Yeah. It's not fun. But he says, I will renew your strength. They shall mount up. I love the word mount up. You need to go up, ascend up, climb up. We're going to climb up. How many are you climbing? How many are you ascending up? But you shall mount up. With wings as eagles. And you shall run, which means speedy. Everybody speedy. Say speedy. Speedy. Yeah. Run and be not weird. Oh, you know why we get weary? Because we're sitting there exploring the facts of our troubles. We're looking and looking and looking. Of course we're going to get weary. <laughs> but when you mount up and you start climbing away from your problems and you climb to the presence of God where your troubles resolve. Yeah. Oh, amen. Oh, 
come on. When you start walking away from it, and passing through that, and not getting renewed, do you want to stop worrying to get out of the worry? Why are you sitting there still? Right? Oh. Are you still good? Yeah. Shows I have three, four minutes left here. <laughs> no, we're in good time. I gave myself 40 minutes just in case it didn't feel like, oh, it felt like five, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Stevie, not be weird. They shall walk and they shall not faint. How shall you not faint? It's only when you wait upon the Lord, when you walk in Him and get renewed in Him daily and become as an eagle. You know what I love what T.D. Jake says? He says, you just got to let those chickens flop right out of your church. <laughs> Did you know that chickens can't fly? But they only fly to a certain level. But they, they actually prefer pecking. You know what? Some of Christians are chickens. We are chicken to do the Word of God, so we peck on the people that are. But we can be renewed. God has this power and full thing of being reborn. You know, I got so suffered, I thought I was going to become, I was feeling so much, I thought I was going to become a butterfly. There is a fact of renewing, right? And it, it, God can make a chicken into an eagle. But the fact is that we're focusing on the chickens that are pecking on us more than the eagles. Eagles are amazing animals. They're so beautiful. I, have, I heard this how, you know, not my young kids, but they mate in the air. Like they, they, they do, they, they, they are, they, they, I can tell them, no man, I mean, we can't even imagine that. I mean, just, <laughs> that's, that's way beyond me, but just, and they are relaxed what they're doing and they are graceful. See, the thing is, our intimacy of God comes in the high levels. It doesn't come on the chicken yeah. realm. It comes in the place up here. It comes in the place of the spiritual realm. It comes in the place where God meets us. It comes in the place of soaring in His presence. It doesn't come in the place of pecking in His presence. Yeah. Or slapping the chicken. <laughs> but if you learn how to soar, you learn how to be intimate with in God. How do you And I had a message on it. You should know it's a really old one. It doesn't even call. He's not as good as it these days, but it's called mulching. A mulching eagle or something like that. Um, and the eagles molt. Molt? Molt. See, I said it wrong again. I do it every time, and somebody cuts me every time. Praise God, we have those kind of people that can cut me. Um, molt. 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 They molt. And the coolest thing is about the, when they molt, and an eagle molts anywhere between 35 to 45 years old. And when they molt, they go hide in the cave. They climb up high, and that's where they rest until they finish renewing themselves. <laughs> and uh, they lose their eyes, they lose their sight, they lose their nose, they lose everything. Have you ever felt that you lost everything? Maybe you've been renewing. The saddest thing about this is that pure eagles that haven't gone through it yet, the pure Christians that haven't gone through what you've gone through don't understand. They start pecking at you. The eagle can only be renewed. And guess who feeds the eagles are renewed? It's the older ones that have gone through it. The eagle, older eagles that have gone through the molting, come to them and feed them while they're blind, and they protect them from the youngs that don't understand. See, the thing is, we all need partners in Christ. Yes. I'm, I'm glad to be partnered with St. Father. We all need that friendship where we can protect each other. And I really want to do that for Safe Harbor. And for anybody that wants me to, I will be there for them to protect them. But the thing is, we need to protect each other because somebody else is pecking at you because they don't understand the renewing process. So maybe personally you've been renewing and you just haven't known it. And because every time you've gone through hardships and you're down and alone, and you, sit, you feel like you're sitting alone and you can't see God no more, and you can't taste well, you can't smell no more, and your feathers look ugly, you look so ugly you don't even want to go outside no more. That's why you feel like it. God says, I come to help you. But you know what? The renewing process slows down when those younger eagles don't allow the process to take place. That's called Christian bickering. 
That's called competition. That's called persecution. Do you have an older ego that has gone through something beside you? So when you go through a renewing state that you haven't been through before, that there's somebody there for you. Do you have a church where you can actually honestly be connected to and be protected? Where you have people to overlook and oversee and cover you? Anyway, most people don't want to hear that part. So I'll go on. I'm two minutes over, so I'm going to wind it down. So I want to challenge you. I'm going to stop there, but I'm going to challenge you to stop waiting for the move of God, but start becoming the move of God. Church, wake up. Give me, wake up. Southern Manitoba, wake up. The interlace group. Morrison area, wake up. Oh. Like we need to wake up. Because if we don't wake up, I found out that if we as a church, not necessarily pass, but we as a church, would stand up for the truth, we would be in a better place right now. <coughs> don't leave it just to the pastors, but leave it to the pastors to help you encourage you, to lift you up, to protect you, to cover you. Don't be stupid and do it alone. Be connected. And I feel, just like Jesus said to Peter, I really believe this in my spirit. Really, really believe in my spirit right now. Jesus is asking us, can't you stay awake for one hour? And that word hour, if you study it in, this, in the spiritual sense, it means a season. This season. Can you not stay awake this season that I have for you? That very critical season of the church. A very critical season of all believers. Did you notice in the Bible that it doesn't say that I have all but build believers and upon this believer came to help and not prevail? Did you notice it did not say that? I know you don't want to make it, but I, 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 just, I, I don't always want to make it either, but the fact says that Jesus said upon this church I will build Upon this body, I will build. Upon the rock, I will build. Where nothing can come against you. As soon as you become an individual believer, hell will break through against you. As soon as you join together in the revival and the move of God that is happening right now, the devil will have no chance. When you unify, when you join together, you say, well, I don't want that. It doesn't mean you have to go to that church. It just means you have to be friends. Sometimes you just come over to like this for a family gathering. Kind of get together. And you bless each other for what God is doing. Amen? Amen. So, with that, we're going to shut her down the video. We're going to start